everyone here see that? Yeah. Did raise your hand? Wasn't that awesome? It was great. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of work went into that. There was probably 300 traps, uh, maybe even more. 400 traps that went into making that tree. It took a lot of volunteer efforts from different fishermen. Uh, and last year, we were asked to decorate that tree. Uh, and this event is kind of the culmination of being asked to do that by Janice Lufkin Shea. Is she here right now? Yeah, she is. Why don't you stand up, Janice? So, Janice came to me last year and said, you know, we've been doing this lobster trap tree for 10 years, and uh, it's great that it's right across the street from you guys. Would you guys be willing to decorate some buoys for it? So I said, yeah, it sounds great. So we went to different places around town, uh, Winchester Fishing, uh, Roses Marine, uh, and Ben's Paint, and they've donated everything to make that possible. And all we had to do was sit there and uh, help the kids paint the buoys. You guys are so great. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to say, you know, it's been so great. This is our one, almost one and a half year anniversary. So uh, the first time we had this event was our six month anniversary. So pretty young organization, and uh, we've been really lucky to have a lot of support from this community. You guys, you guys have been great. And uh, I want to start talking a little bit about the person who, well actually, Janice, you conceived of the idea of the lobster trap tree, uh, but she didn't actually build it. So right now, really quickly, I want to invite someone up, uh, because he is the architect of the lobster trap tree for the last 10 years. Uh, Jeff, would you come right up? Jeff, to mark his 10th anniversary of the Lobster Trap Christmas tree. So he's going to tell you a little bit more about the tree. Here you go. What a great gift. Thank you, David. How about a round of applause for David, all the hard work he does in our year. This is a very special award. I, I'm actually the first recipient. Um, I look forward to giving it away to somebody else someday. Um, but really, the winner of this award and the people that deserve the credit, uh, I am involved. I don't like to say architect because that uh, means some liability if uh, it falls down. Um, but I've been involved for 10 years, and there's a lot of people behind this. I can't name them all for two reasons. I can't remember all of them. There's so many. Um, but secondly, they're not all here. Um, there's just a couple people I can see. I see Ed Collin from House Doctors. Ed, you want to raise your hand? Anybody else here help build a lobster trap tree? Standing, you know, 20, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet high in the air. Sorry, Dan Brooks. Dan? So 10 years ago, Janice Shea came up with this wonderful idea of building a lobster trap tree down on Main Street. Of course, none of us had any idea how to build a tree out of lobster traps. We probably should have just gone to Maine and asked them how to do it, but of course we decided to learn it the hard way, to build our own. It's very difficult. It goes up now in about a day and a half. It didn't always go up that way. When we started, we had wooden buoys and wooden traps metal traps, yellow traps, four footers, three footers, two and a half footers, rusted traps, dangerous traps. And you gotta do it in a way that you can stand on the very top with nothing in the middle. So it's kind of complex. I'm not an architect, but we figured it out um, without any plans or any building inspector giving us a hard time. I'm sorry. So each year, it got harder and harder because everyone would challenge us to get bigger and bigger, and there's, so, there's only so much space. And believe it or not, November and December are busy, busy times for lobstermen. So to get two, 300 lobster traps, that's not easy. Sometimes there's 20 here, 20 there, and I, I can't thank lobstermen enough for all their hard work. Have a round of applause for lobstermen. <laughs> so every year we battle the weather, weather like today. Imagine being seven, eight hours out in the cold. Rain, this year, we, I think it rained for eight straight hours. It stopped raining when we stopped building it that day. Um, and we battled snow and, and we battled uh, getting volunteers. It's hard to get people to commit to spending that kind of time outdoors. So I can't, be, I can't thank enough the people who've dedicated their Thanksgiving weekends, 
the weekends right before the lobster trap tree lighting to make sure all the electricity worked. It's a big job. Now there's been much talk about my resigning or retiring. Um, that's partly because I started a new career, I've got a new baby, six month old baby, and uh, it's a little difficult to give up that kind of time. As you all know who have family members, it's, uh, it's a lot to, you don't want to be somewhere else, you want to be home. So that's, the, uh, that's my issue that I've been, challenged, I've been challenged with. This year, I know I'll be involved in the tree because all my volunteers have said they're not going to do it if I don't. Uh, I'm sure they will, but I do look forward to passing this off to somebody else who then takes the, the charge. I just want to say one last thing. Last year was very difficult building this tree, and we're, I was personally running out of a little bit of gas, and I needed somebody to pass the torch to, and I can't say enough about David Brooks and the, and the work with all the volunteers at Art Haven for infusing the tree with some creativity, with some energy, some muscle. Thank you very much, David. I look forward to seeing you guys at the tree lighting next year. Enjoy this second annual buoy auction. Bid early, bid often. Raise, can everyone raise their paddle for a second? Just get in the habit of raising it. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep doing it. So, just kidding. Thank you very much. Enjoy your night.